My name is Diana Constantinini and I'm absolutely thrilled to share this video with you about how to become an international lawyer. The very first stage of you to become an international lawyer is for you to earn a law degree. So therefore, even before you go to the university, while you are at school, you need to decide about your career path. I'm not going to get into too much detail about how you can earn your law degree, but what I would urge you to do is go and check out how to become a lawyer at which is a video that I've done some time ago, perhaps it was the first video that I've done on my YouTube channel and I will leave a link down below for you to click on it and go and check out about how to become a lawyer. Once you do have your law degree, it is somehow a ticket that you hold and it allows you to board on the plane to go in any destination you want to. I'm saying that because international law, it is so vast and it has so many different legal disciplines that you have to decide yourself what is the discipline, the legal discipline that you would decide to dedicate yourself. You don't necessarily have to dedicate yourself for the rest of your life. Uh, it is a palette of different colors and it is beautiful to have the ability and the skills to paint, uh, if I would say by analogy, a painting that you can do so by your own skills. That means you can actually gain experience from different disciplines. However, when it comes into international law, you need to choose wisely. When you start, when you set up your foundation, the legal discipline that it is the one that you feel most passionate about. You may start by passion, but then it is through experience that you will understand and you'll be able to crystallize the area of law that somehow would come in hand with the, I would say, the practicalities of the profession. But before you even get into deciding and crystallizing the area of law that you would like to, um, to practice, I would say that it is so important for you to be able to just get into it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to know what your passion is. Somehow it is through the, the experience and just doing things. For example, if you're a law student, you could be doing clinics, legal clinics. I remember I've done my uh, le pro bono legal clinics. You could be doing moot courts. Um, you could be volunteering in different member groups. For example, I know amigos that they deal with death row. You can start with something, literally just throw yourself, get that experience. Um, unless you're the one of kind of people that you do know what you want to do. And I will say to you, just do it. Go for it. You can do it. You can succeed and you can do what you, you feel that you're passionate about. Because ultimately, passion, it is the sophistication as to be successful in any area of law you decide to practice. International lawyers sometimes can be found in either law firms, non-governmental organisations, the NGOs. It could be either companies, even sometimes that they've got in-house lawyers. You can even find yourself to be a legal servant into the government itself. I, I also met with the lawyers that they, uh, they do startups, they are businessmen somehow, but there is the international element and they use that experience that they have from a very interesting perspective. So it's an amalgamation between being a lawyer and an entrepreneur and really en enable them to engage in a different level with their business. <laughs> Experience is pivotal into practicing law and I presume in any other uh, in any other industry I understand that experience it is the foundation that determines your success. Now the question is how do you gain the experience? There's so many ways that you can gain experience and I would suggest and I really advise you to gain your experience from a very early stage. And somehow, and I've seen it some time ago, I remember at the Royal Court of Justice, there were these schools, um, I think from age 10 to 12, that they would bring uh, students with them from, from primary schools or from high schools. And they will do mood calls and they will have judges. And uh, they will engage into advocacy by giving them a very simple topic. I don't remember what the topic was at that time because I was, I was in a rush to get somewhere. But I found that to be absolutely fascinating that they were able at the age of 10, 10 to 12 to engage into advocacy and for them to decide as to whether it is something that they like. Definitely if you are a law student at university, I will encourage you to engage into pro bono clinics and there is the mood courts and get involved with the societies and there are so many other 
um, organizations that they are very willing to embark with you on a beautiful journey and teach you beautiful things which you need to you need to embark into this journey and research and ask people and listen to people in order for you to be able to get to a point that you know what you want to do and somehow even myself sometimes I'm not very sure what I'm doing it is a constant journey it is a a beautiful journey whereby I'm discovering day by day my own abilities and my own skills. It hasn't been that long time ago that I've wrote, a, I co authored in an article about how international law adopts domestic legal principles, and I will leave a link down below for the article which I've co authored with other fellow uh, international lawyers at the, at the International Law Association, which I am a member. Why I mention this article is that when I was writing um, the particular chapter of the article is that international law itself, it is somehow mainly relied upon domestic legal principles. It is inspired by domestic jurisdictions and this reflects upon the experience that you want to gain yourself. You can't be international if you haven't had an understanding of domestic law itself. Now, whether you are in the UK, whether you are in India, Cyprus, New York, uh, China or any other part of the world, if you don't have a good understanding of your own jurisdiction, of your own practice, of your own procedures in anything that you decide to do, whether that's employment, immigration, criminal procedure rules, etc., then most likely it will be difficult for you to engage on an international level because international law it does have certainly um, it has certainly some complexities because it is a grey area most of the times and because um, it is inspired by different domestic principles. So therefore, do engage yourself in becoming a domestic legal practitioner. Do engage with domestic institutions. Do indeed try to get your own understanding of how your own jurisdiction works. And from there on, you will be able to take that and elevate it into the international perspective. So one way or another, and I've heard so many di diverse and different stories about how people have been successful. Therefore, I will strongly recommend you to do what you're truly passionate about. I wish you best of luck whatever you do. I send you my love and my positivity, and do take care. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you want to watch next. Bye bye!